I am just checking to make sure I'm live here. Quick little impromptu live training. And uh, I'm just checking to make sure I'm live here. It. Turn that volume Quick down. Little impromptu live. All right. Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm a little bit of an emotional state today and I don't exactly know why. I don't know what's got me uh, kind of like having what, what I would call my feels this week. And, uh, and today I made that Facebook post and it just got me thinking about a lot. Actually, actually I do know, I know exactly why I'm in my feels this week. And um, I wanted to honestly share that with you guys and give you guys a little bit of an understanding as to why I'm so passionate about helping all of you guys and why I never want you guys to give up on yourselves. And why, if you're one of my clients, you, I'm sure on the other end are sometimes thinking this girl does not know how to quit. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to quit because I've had too many people quit on me in my life. And I don't want to ever do that to somebody. And I know how it feels to quit on myself. And, and that's something else that I wanted to talk about tonight. But before I get going, I do want to actually just take a quick second. And if you guys have any questions also, by the way, that you want me to talk about tonight, um, in regards to the topic that I have, or your own topics, that's fine too. But I am gonna pull up something that I do wanna share with you guys because um, I think it'll be cool to see a visual. So uh, just give me a second while I'm pulling it up. Like I said, I, I'm doing this very unplanned. Um, I just really wanted to come in here and, and be able to help you guys out a little bit with some understandings of some things and, and hopefully get you guys to all learn that hopefully if you're working with me that you'll never have to die again. That's the goal, right? That's the end goal. So. Um, just give me one second because I'm pulling something up. All right, let's see if that's not gonna work. You know what I'm gonna do? Pull it up on Google because I know that Google will always work for me, even if, if Safari doesn't. Um, all right, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna get into the weeds of what I'm doing with this yet, but I'm just gonna have it open so I can kind of reference it. Okay. So um, first of all, if you're watching live or not live, thank you obviously for coming on. Um, I wanted to start by telling you guys why I know uh, I'm in my feels this week. Um, so 2008, I believe it was, uh, or 2009, uh, September, I entered an eating disorder treatment facility. Um, I was walking around at about 80 pounds, um, barely eating anything, working out for six to eight hours a day, uh, along with not even knowing what it felt like to sit down because I didn't allow myself to sit down long enough because that was wasted time. And I wanted to burn as many calories as I could. And I lived my life like that for a really long time. In September of 2008, 2009, I actually can't remember which year it was. I think it was 2008. Um, I entered an eating disorder treatment facility, forced. Uh, you obviously have to voluntarily Put yourself into one of those places if you aren't um, a medical, um, what's the word I'm looking for, a hazard to yourself, I guess, if you're not a danger to yourself. Um, but basically the story is this, and I'm not going to get too far into this because this is, isn't the purpose of my Zoom tonight, um, but I basically um, was put in the hospital. My heart rate was dropping. My blood sugar was really low. And they're like, hey, if you don't do something now, like you're going to die. So face that reality, I did what I had to do. And so I know that this month is a really hard month for me because I think about how hard that time in my life was. And I remembered how hard it was to let go of all that control and have it almost taken from me. And, and then knowing that, like, I was so afraid of what was going to happen, you know, like, but I was also kind of in a place where I was grateful that finally, all the things I was struggling with were being taken away from me. And it wasn't in my hands anymore. I wasn't having to fight with how to stop doing the things that I was doing to myself, how to like come off this crazy hamster wheel. And, and I just remember feeling so scared, but so grateful that somebody finally had taken it out of my hands and that I wasn't going to have to worry about it again. And so um, I know that this month is a very emotional month for me because of that. And, and the reason I wanted to start by talking to you guys about that is because as I go into my topic tonight, which is like, hey, I'm never going to have to diet again. Nope. Never going to diet again, ever in my life. 
And I want that for every fucking person I work with. And I say that with passion because it sucks. It freaking sucks. And I'm going to take you back a little bit further before the eating disorder to when I was younger and I watched my mom's sisters, not my mother, her sisters compete over who was sicker, who had more medical issues. Also being told, oh, you just wait. Once you become an adult, everything goes downhill. Basically, I was being told that my destiny was to be overweight, sick, completely unhealthy, because that was what I had looking to look forward to in my future. For being alive, I was just going to look forward to growing old, being overweight, unhealthy, lots of pain, all these issues that they were dealing with. I was going to somehow deal with at some point. And I was scared shitless. I was 16 years old and I'm like, I don't want to end up like that. Mm -mm. And I tried things, tried vegetarian diet, tried freaking the granola bar diet, tried Weight Watchers. Well, I didn't really know what Weight Watchers was. I just kind of took the book and was like trying this point thing out. Um, just tried crazy restriction, you know, all of these different things and never, I'm going to be honest, I was a horrible dieter. I would like do a diet for like one or two days. And then it was like, oh, fuck it. That chicken pot pie looks pretty good. <laughs> and that was my life. You know, I grew up like not even knowing what it felt like to eat like healthy foods. And it wasn't, and I, I'm not at all because my parents did try and build balanced meals, but not to the balance that I understand now as an adult. And it's just because of the way that they were raised and, and all of those kinds of things. So, and the reason I say that is because that's what drove me when I was 19 years old to like make some changes. It became a health focused decision. I did not want to be unhealthy. I did not want to be sick. I did not want to turn into my mom's sisters. And, you know, that's something that to this day still lives in my head. And in fact, I still deal with some insecurities in my life where I think about some of those people and how I sometimes feel like I don't want to become them. And if I have a habit that I feel like is something that they used to do, it freaks me out and it completely makes me disgusted. And it might not even be a big deal. But I'm going to fast forward now because I wanted to lay the backstory a little bit for why I, I wanted to talk to you guys about this tonight is, you know, obviously, you know, my story, if you don't mind know my story, I, I actually did record a podcast episode on it. If you want to hear more about it, I'll share that with you. Hell, if you want to watch my movie, you can share, I'll share that with you too. But I really hate talking about myself. <laughs> so the only reason I do it is because I hopefully that when I share my struggles, I feel like hopefully there's somebody watching that is going to be able to resonate with that and I'll be able to help you. And that's my bigger picture goal and why I am so passionate about what I do is that I do believe that strengths come from weaknesses and the things that I struggle with are going to help me be stronger for the people out there that struggle with those very same things because I've overcome them and I'm fucking proud of it. Okay, I'm fucking proud of it. And I know that in my heart, I will never go back to where I was. And that goes to the same saying is, I'm never gonna have to lose weight again because I did. All right, so going through that time before I got treatment, before I had to enter that eating disorder treatment facility, when I was only 80 pounds, my weight had yo-yoed quite a bit for the last five or six years before that, because I was binging and restricting because I would go through a period of time anorexic, and then I would try and get some therapy and I'd put on weight. My weight was up and down always. I couldn't find the control factor. I couldn't find that happy medium because I was either all in and I was just so afraid of gaining weight that I kept losing weight or I was all out and I'm like, fuck it whatever. And yeah, it was an extreme because it was an eating disorder because there was other emotional factors going on that were causing me to, to act that way. But it's all kind of cyclical in the same way that people diet. And I think back now to where I'm talking to you guys about this today is when I entered CrossFit, I was given this like opportunity to completely forget everything that I had known. Because for once in my life, there was people around me that had the same goals. They had the same opportunities. They had the same wishes and ambitions. They had the same lifestyle. And I think back to before 
I had gotten really sick and I remembered wanting somebody like I wanted a mentor. I wanted somebody to help me understand nutrition better. And it's why I went to school for it. Cause I, I wanted to learn. I didn't want to be sick. I, I didn't understand the emotional connect connection of an eating disorder and, and my life. I didn't understand that, but I wanted to learn about nutrition. I wanted people around me. I wanted a fucking nutrition coach, but back then there wasn't nutrition coaches. There was, there was dietary protocols like Weight Watchers and Atkins and the South beach diet and whatever other crazy thing that you might've tried back then. I, I tried the freaking milk and fruit diet. What the hell is that? I don't even know. Um, so, but I wanted that. And I think back and I'm like, man, had I had somebody teach me about nutrition, like the right way, would I have ever gone through all that? Would I have been using food that way? I don't know. And it doesn't really matter at this point because honestly, it's water under the bridge and op every opportunity that I've gotten to overcome a struggle only makes me stronger. So I'm, I'm very proud of where I'm at today and being able to sit here at home in my apartment and talk to you guys about that journey, whether you're listening or not. Um, but I entered CrossFit and for once I had coaches, I had mentors, I had people that were like fit and I wanted to be like, and it wasn't like me taking advice from somebody that, you know, five years ago told me like, oh, you're going to be sick when you're older. That's the last person you want to take advice from. So I wasn't going to listen to them. So I really enjoyed everything that I was learning, but I absorbed it. I absorbed it all. And I started that same protocols because I felt like it was the right thing. I was with this supportive community and they were telling me like paleo was the way and zone was the way and that that was gonna get me performance. Um, I also really dove into learning a lot about nutritionally outside of just the, you know, eating healthy and stuff like that, but understanding like food sensitivities and allergies and gut health and, and leaky gut and, and inflammation and autoimmune and all of these different things I was learning about. And it was all making sense to the conditions that my family had dealt with. And it's why to this day, I still very much follow a very high quality, I don't wanna call it paleo because you guys know I like my rice cakes, but I do eat very clean food. I do try and make sure that I'm limiting the amount of ingredients on the list that I, if I wanted to make that, ingre that, that food that I'm getting, that I could come home and make it at home. And, and that's really how I preach most of my clients start. It's a very well-balanced diet. But what happened was, I went from one extreme to the to the next, right? I was kind of like in this place where like now I can eat whatever I want as long or as much as I want, as long as it's paleo. And um, I was kind of getting back into this hamster wheel of like, you know, eating clean and then cheating. And it wasn't an eating disorder at all. It was just, I was following suit with what everybody else was doing. And I was under eating because the zone diet was very low calorie. And it was causing me to overeat on the weekends. When I wanted a cookie, I would shun the cookie and have a whole jar of almond butter, <laughs> which if you know how much, how many calories are in a jar of almond butter, you understand that that's likely not going to do any good. So I started spiraling into all of these, you know, I started gaining weight a little bit and I was getting unhappy. I would eat too much and feel sick. I would go to a party and eat and then be like, oh my God, why did I do that? And for two days I'd be restricting. And it was this battle now with like trying to fit the mold of what the CrossFit community was preaching. But I was also falling into this unhealthy relationship with food where I was afraid to eat things like oatmeal and yogurt and, you know, whole grains because they were not paleo. Um, and then I would find myself, you know, every once in a while, just binging on a whole pizza because it was the last time I was going to have it. And when it really shifted for me was when I finally made that commitment to myself, I kind of looked in the mirror and I was like, Cheryl, you're unhealthy. And so once again, this came from a health perspective that I, I was becoming uncomfortable with how I felt. Yes, I did not like how I looked. And when I was 19 years old, I hated the fact that my clothes didn't fit, but it came from a place of like, I was feeling heavy. I was feeling puffy. I was uncomfortable. Like I just didn't feel good. I, I just felt like there was this heaviness about me that I didn't like, and I didn't want that anymore. And I made a decision and this is what the topic is tonight. Okay. So that year, um, before I actually made the decision where I had actually gained too much weight and I actually lost another 20, 30 pounds. We don't need to go into the complete details of the numbers. It doesn't really matter, but 
when I finally made that decision to say, all right, I'm going to do this, it was a flip. Okay. And that's why I wanted to show you guys something today that I know you guys, if you're a client of mine, you're going to understand why I'm saying, why I'm starting with this and why I'm going to segue this into um, my topic tonight, which is how I'm never going to have to diet again. Okay. So um, I started my journey towards what I would like to call my, the last cut, the last diet, the last weight loss I've ever had to do. Cause I'm never doing it again. Um, in 2014. And I can remember the day it was the beginning of December, 2014. And this is what is so cool about my fitness pal guys. I can go back all the way to oh, fucker. Um, to 2014, which is what I wanted to pull up for you guys. Uh, and I actually want to show you the difference of something and just pause, bear with me while I just accidentally click the wrong button here. Okay. And I'm going to show you something that I know many people struggle with. Okay. All right. This was September 1st of 2014. So I had loosely started tracking my food again. Um, for the first time since like 2000, I don't know, three or four, um, back in like, I want to say like March of 2014, I had started to get wind of some things that maybe I was doing wrong. And I wanted to kind of take a look at what the zone was, you know, I, I, it was actually around the time that my fitness pal was getting popular. So I think I just kind of like jumped on the bandwagon, downloaded it and started tracking my food. Okay. And this was a logged day on, let's just say this is Monday, September 1st of 2014. Man, those cards were pretty low compared to where I'm at now. Um, you can see I was way overeating protein. I was at 200 grams of protein. Um, and this was honestly my probably pretty standard diet for, you know, I think my lunch and my dinner would fluctuate because I used to get a company that would cook for me. And, um, it would be based on whatever they would, um, prep. And I would honestly just take the piece out and weigh it. And that's usually what I would log. But what I'm going to show you is that was Monday. What do you see Tuesday? Nothing. Wednesday looks like I logged pretty good. About the same, a little bit higher on both of those numbers. Let's see what I logged on Thursday. Logged again on Thursday. I didn't log any snacks. I'm going to be honest. I know I'm a snacker. So I know I likely had some snacks. Uh, Friday. Looks like I logged. You can see where I'm at. Saturday. This is what's so cool about my fitness pal. Saturday. Nothing. Sunday. Nothing. Oh, look, Monday's here. I'm back on track again. Let's see what Tuesday looks like pretty good. Man, I was loving them quest bars. Wednesday tracking. Let's just fast forward to the weekend because I think I'm making my point pretty clear here. Oh, look, another Saturday of nothing. Another Sunday of nothing. Monday back on track. Let's fast forward a little bit to like October. Wednesday, October 15th. Yep got everything logged in here. And I wasn't counting macros or anything at this point, guys. I was just keeping a food journal really. Um, and I will be honest, it was a half-ass one. Uh, Friday, nothing. Saturday, nothing. Sunday. Oh, I kind of logged on Sunday. Okay. Do you know what kind of results I was getting? The same kind most people that are not seeing results are getting. Why am I not losing any weight? Why is my weight going up? What am I doing wrong? I'm eating the same food all the time. I wasn't tracking my food. I was not holding myself accountable. Okay. This, this went on for months, months. All right. Now I'm going to fast forward to that day where I said, you know what? I'm fucking done. I'm going to do this shit and I'm not going to ever have to lose this weight again. Okay. Cause I remember it was December. It was December 6th. We did the I did a test. Okay. And then December 7th is when I kind of started. I, th I think this is about when I started. Okay. So this is when I actually started tracking my food 100%. All right. You can already see the difference in my calorie intake when I was actually being honest. 
And this was day number one of me tracking my food 100%. I'm almost positive. I could be wrong. It might've been a week later, but we're going to see. Tuesday, I'll track. And I want you to look at my calorie intake. Wednesday, I'll track. Pretty consistent. Thursday, tracked. Friday, let's see if I did it. Let's see what I did. Saturday, boom, what do you know? Weekends tracked. Sunday, boom, another weekend tracked. Even logged my fortune cookie. <laughs> Cause I think I went, it looks like I went out to eat that day. Yeah, sashimi, sushi. Monday, tracked. Calorie intake, pretty consistent. Let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit to December 20th. I'll tracked. Tracked. Ooh, maybe not. Okay. Tracked. I'm just going to start to fast forward through some weekends here. December 27th. Consistent. Consistent. Let's fast forward. Let's just go into January. Let's try January 10th. I think this was Wadapalooza weekend. All tracked. Sunday. Tracked. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you guys is one, how I finally saw results, okay? This is how I finally saw results. I stopped bullshitting myself and I gave it 100%. And it's not that I want you guys to think about tracking is not a rigid thing. Tracking your food is not rigidity. Why was I not tracking before? It had nothing to do with that being that difficult. It had everything to do with, I wasn't prioritizing it because I didn't see the importance of it. And two, I honestly didn't think what I was eating was that bad. So I was like, what does it matter if I track it? But the problem is I was forgetting the calorie gain. And that there was times that I would go out to eat and I honestly didn't want to deal with fucking logging the burger salad I got from Met Bar that had sweet potato fries on the side. But that was the shit that was holding me back from seeing results. So I finally said, fuck all this bullshit. I'm going all in. I'm going to track my food. I was never spot on macros back then, by the way. Never. Back then, I, I was on a go. I was on a mission. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get enough protein. And I'm going to make sure I get this weight off. I didn't care. I was going to do what I had to do. And I'll be honest, there were days where I was hungry. There were days where back then I, I probably should have had a nutrition coach because they likely would have fed me more, but I didn't care. Or I was on a mission and I was going to do this. Okay. How did I start the process that was going to allow me to keep this weight off forever? Okay. Cause I did at one point get to a point where I'm like, Hey, I don't want to lose any more weight. What do I do now? Okay. I had two options. I can go back to where I'd been before at 19 years old and continue to obsess and avoid dealing with the emotional bullshit going on in my head and keep losing weight because that was something that I could have done. If you've got any kind of a personality with addiction, you understand what I'm saying because it's the same thing. Okay. But I knew that wasn't right. And I knew that's where this was going to go. I was going to start to use this as a way to cope with my feelings if I wasn't smart. Okay. How did I then go from this to where I'm at now, which is six years later, still maintaining a lean body, eating way more food. I have the flexibility to have whatever I want, but I don't fucking want whatever I want. I want what I want. And what I want isn't what I wanted when I was 19 years old. And pizza used to do it for me all the time and ice cream and Burger King. Cause that's where I freaking worked for the first three or four years of my life. Right. So what changed? I hired a coach. This is not a plug for coaching at all. This is a plug for accountability. Okay. I got the results on my own accountability. Okay. I was able to hold myself accountable to keeping a food journal. I stopped bullshitting myself. And I said, I'm going to do this the right way. And I still ate out. I had sashimi logged and fortune cookies and shit. Like I still ate out, but I kept myself on track because I had that discipline. Most people don't have that discipline and it sucks 
when you're being told, well, the reason you're not getting results is because you're not doing this thing. And that person's like, oh, it's so much work. No, it's really not. I was in your shoes. I was fucking lazy and I didn't understand why I was doing it. And I want people to understand that the number one tool that is going to help you get results is accountability. All of the tools in the world, all of the meal plans in the world, all of the nutrition, education, all the hormone bullshit, all of it is irrelevant if you cannot hold yourself accountable or you don't have somebody to hold yourself accountable, 100%. So when I went from being, I need to eat more food, okay, I want to stop losing weight, I was scared. Okay, I, I hired my now business mentor to help me with nutrition. And I wanted to learn this second piece because I knew how to help people lose weight. I knew how to get people to eat healthier. I understood all of those things. But what I didn't understand is what do you do after? And it was, it's still the missing link. And it's still the missing link with all the clients out there who want to give up when they reach their goal. All right, I'm, I'm 20 pounds later. See you later, coach. It don't work that way. I don't want you back. I don't, I love you all. I don't want you back because if I have you back, that means I failed you. Granted, I know we all are going to run through periods and we just want that accountability again. But what I want you to understand is I want you all leaving me like, man, I'm in such a good place. Like, I don't think I'm going to have to. Okay. So let's talk about how I got out of this. All right. I'm going to fast forward now again. I'm going to pull up my sheet again. Cause I think it's good to have a visual. And if I'm boring guys, I'm sorry. I just really wanted to share this with y'all. Hopefully I'm not I'm gonna go into when, let's go to about, I think, let me see. When did I meet Jason? Give me a second. That's the cool part about my fitness pal. I'm going to say, yep, it was before this. <laughs> it was probably somewhere. Let's see. When did he have me start? Maybe January. Okay. Okay. Let's see how, all right, yes, now we're getting into it. I knew it was somewhere towards the end here. I'm gonna go to like, all right, so this is probably about where I met Jason. And I'm being honest because I don't really remember 100% why there is a lapse in my food journal. I may have had like another account or something at some point which I know you guys understand if you've got three, three different email addresses. Um, I'm not exactly sure. There might've been a little bit of a lapse here, but I believe when I first started working with him, he was like, let's just start here. And as you can see, my numbers are much higher. Okay. This was 2009, I'm sorry, 2017, December 9th. Okay. He basically got me to start at a place where I was comfortable. And then I slowly started increasing things to where you can see as I got better and better at it, I was still at around 2,600 calories. I'm going to fast forward about a month or two later. Let's see about the same. You can see how slow this process was. up to 80 on fat, just about 400 on carbs. That was February. I started in December, mind you. This is now two months later because I wasn't comfortable going any faster. Let's go to the end of March. I have documentation of my own reverse diet. Okay, now I'm up to 419 on carbs. Let's go to the end of April.
up to 450 on carbs. Let's go to the end of July. That's a, probably about where I ended up stopping, I think, for a while. My fat was up to 80, hitting around 135 protein, and probably ballparking between 435 and 450 on carbs is what I was going to guess, depending on the day. Okay. So fast forward again to March of 2020. Look how much higher my carbs are now. Okay. So what I'm showing you guys is for is that there is a process that happens after you've reached your goal. You're likely not going to get up to 500 carbs unless you train athletically, not just for life. Right. Um, he was fueling me as an athlete. Okay. But I had that accountability. I had that coach that I trusted to help me get up there. Okay. So now I'm going to kind of end on why I'm never going to have to diet again. Okay. These tools that I used to lose weight, to reverse diet are the exact same tools that I use to maintain. Okay. I don't have to track my food every day. I know that I could stop tracking and my weight would not change, but my purpose for tracking is not to keep, keep my weight in check. It's to make sure that I'm eating enough calories to fuel my training because I have athletic goals. If I wasn't going to the CrossFit games, I probably wouldn't track every day. I think that I could be pretty in tune. But the other thing that I would do is I would consistently still weigh myself to keep myself in check there. I would weigh myself probably three or four times a week, get the average just to see how progress is being made because I worked too fucking hard too many times in my life to ever have to diet again. It sucks having to cut weight. You guys can all relate to being hungry and wanting to eat or watching your friends eat and be like, oh my God, I just want to have a piece of that and having to say no. Like that sucks. I don't have to do that anymore because I worked my ass off to get where I'm at. And five years later, my body is well at a new set point. Okay. So a couple of things as I'm kind of, I don't want to get too far off on a tangent here because I want to keep this focused on what I want to talk about tonight is how am I keeping this weight off five, six years later? How have I never walked down another spiraling of an eating disorder? How have I never done that? Accountability. I hold myself accountable with the food journal with the scale. I also make sure that I have people around me that understand. I lean on them for support. I surround myself with people who are understanding and involved in the exact same things that I do. And I don't give myself an option. That's really what I do. And so the goal of this tonight is to get you guys to understand that if you give our process 100%. Those of you guys in the challenge, this is for you. If you give this 100%, you will never have to diet again, ever. You won't. But there's things that people do which makes them have to diet again. One is they avoid accountability. This is why I know when somebody who is missing their check-in needs my help because they're avoiding dealing with the problem. They don't want to face the reality that they're shit in the bed. They don't want me to be disappointed in them. And I'm not disappointed in them. I want to tell them like, Hey, I know this is hard. I know what you want. I know what you have to do. How are we going to get you to do it? How can we make it uncomfortably comfortable for you to work at this this week? And everybody's going to be a little bit different. And some people are going to say, can't do it. It's not for everybody. I get it. And those people will likely be stuck exactly the same for the rest of their life. And that sucks for me as a coach. I want to help everybody. I can't, I can't take on that burden because there's going to be somebody out there that isn't going to be willing to do it. So people avoid dealing with the problems. I coach Dylan soon to be coach Michelle. We find the problems. We help you find the problems. And that's uncomfortable. We're also going to help you with the solutions. And to keep this weight off, those solutions don't go away. 
they became the changes that you needed to make. Because at 19 years old, my diet consisted of Pop-Tarts, rice aroni, macaroni and cheese, mm, fried chicken. I didn't grill anything. <laughs> Everything was breaded and fried at that point. Um, and now I don't even think about those foods. But I grew up eating them for years. And now I don't. So anyways, this is getting long. Um, I just felt like I wanted to come on here and share a little bit about this because I want you guys to understand. And what I want you to take away is that the number one thing you need, and that's why I also have the legacy program, is accountability. If it's with you, somebody else, whatever it is. If you're avoiding tracking your food, it's because you're avoiding the problem. You don't want to see, I was there. If you're putting weight back on and you're not using your tools, pull out your tools because they need you, you need them. I'm going to close down this and see if there's any questions in the chat box. I know it's sometimes hard for me to see that when I'm on here. So let me just open that up. Let's see. Hi, Carrie. Looks like that was 31 minutes ago. I doubt she's still on. Um, guys, this was fun tonight. If you guys need me, you know where to find me. Uh, challengers, I'll talk to you all tomorrow. I see a couple of people still watching. If you guys have any other questions you wanted to uh, pop in, anything else you want to say, feel free to. But uh, I'm going to wait on here for a few minutes. No? All right, guys. Peace out.